we, we the, the way we tend to describe this is that we say it's a scalable low latency GC. And the reason why we would want something like this is because GC pause times is still a problem in many job applications. And the GCs we have today uh, do not offer the, the, the low GC pauses that many are looking for. And that is especially true when you're using very large heaps. It doesn't necessarily only apply to that use case. It can still be a problem for, for relatively small heaps. Uh, so, so that's what this ZGC is addressing. Uh, essentially, uh, sort of removing GC pauses as a problem for Java applications in general. Okay. And um, uh, so there's, you know, low latency could mean a lot of things. And, right. and the way we define it at the moment is that this GC should never have a pause exceeding 10 milliseconds. And that's sort of a, uh, quite a lot better than, than what, uh, and, and I should, s should add that it should able be able to do this low pulses regardless of what heap size or live set size you're using. Mm -hmm. And that's quite a bit better than what um, uh, current collectors uh, can perform. So you show actually uh, uh, something about uh, performance, right? So what is... Um right, so I have a few slides here. Sure. Essentially showing you the, 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 the results from spec JBB, which is a sort of well-known uh, industry standard benchmark. And um, uh, in, th in this uh, slide I'm showing here, you can see, uh, or this benchmark is showing you basically two scores. That's max JOPS and critical JOPS. Max JOPS here shown with the dark blue bars, that's a, a raw throughput score. And the, and, and the critical JOPS, the light blue bars here, that's the latency sensitive score, so uh, the, the better or the lower pause times you typically have, the better score you'll have there. Okay. And as you can see here on raw throughputs, you see it's basically uh, comparable to the other collectors. And uh, in terms of, of uh, critical JOPs, the, the latency sensitive score, you can see that it's uh, quite a lot better actually than the other collectors. So it's an improvement of you know, between 50% and 29%, depending on which collector you compare against. And if we take, so, so this is the, the, the score, the throughput scores for this. And if we look at the pause times for this same benchmark, uh, you'll see that it's quite a lot different. Said you see barely registers on, on this scale here. And if I make this a logarithmic scale, you can see that pause times, you know, for said you see hover around 1.1 millisecond on average, and it maxes out on two milliseconds. And that can be compared to the other collectors here, which have an average of like 200 to 100 or 150 to 200 and max pause times of, of 300 to 500. So it's uh, uh, quite an improvement. Cool. Uh, so, um, so how do we get started with, um, uh, right, with so this garbage collector? Is it part of the JDK? It's or part it of JDK 11. Um, okay. And that's the first version where it's available. It's still an experimental feature, mm. and it's currently only available on Linux x86 64-bit platform. Okay. Uh, but essentially, to get started, there's a new JVM flag called you said you see. Um, since this is still an experimental feature, you also need to supply the option to unlock that feature. And once you've enabled it for GC, the next phase is you know how do I tune it? And for said you see, we've been trying hard to make this an easy GC to tune. Basically, you should have, sh that means that you shouldn't have to supply, you know, a lot of options to make this perform well. So there are basically two options here. You set the max heap size, essentially give the GC memory, and you give it CPU times, which is setting number of concurrent GC threads. And with these two, um, we're saying, these two options will, will get you there, and, and you shouldn't have to say much more. Um, there are a few other options, but those tend to matter a lot less. So mm -hmm. these are the two, two important ones. OK. And then there are many other uh, I mean, uh, steps to like, uh, really get the, the, the information back, I'm, I'm Right. I mean, I'm you, sure can, you, know, you typically want to enable some kind of GC logging and so on to, to get feedback on how the GC is doing. And using that information, you can then tune your, your max heap size and the concurrent number of GC threads. But uh, you know, like all GCs, you want to have a max heap size that can sort of hold your live set. But you also want to have a certain amount of free space in the heap 
and that will basically tell you how often, how often the GC needs to run. And for a concurrent collector, you also need to have a certain amount of headroom to avoid running out of memory, uh, basically. So uh, these are the two options you should be looking at. And um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so um, where can people learn more? Do you have a slide about uh, right. which link should they uh, consider? So, uh, we're okay. always looking for, you know, feedback, I any kind, you know, good or bad. Uh, we like to know how CDC is performing on, on yep. your workload. And um, if you just want to follow the discussion or actually participate in the development, we have uh, the CDC dev mailing list where, where developments and discussions are happening. So please join that if you're interested. And we also have a wiki page where you can find additional information on sort of technical details on how CDC is working underneath. and. Uh, more information on how to tune it, basically. Wonderful. Thank cool. you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Really appreciate your Thank time. You.